Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Violet Vixen. This is a little bit of a long and involved recipe. I'm going to take my time with it. Obviously, you're not going to see the full um, preparing and everything because it'll probably go for hours otherwise because I'm just at the end of my, well, I'm not really at the end of my week. I'm at the end of my Easter break. Today is Easter Monday. So I've chose this for dinner because it, it will take a little bit longer. There's a bit of preparing to do. But if I do it the way that I'm going to do it, it won't take as long as I think it will. So after saying that, we are cook cooking a Latin American recipe called gaucho pie. Now I have heard the name gaucho before. This is what we need. But there's more. On the back this serves six so gaucho the name came back to me in my head because I did remember seeing it on a TV show called Wild Boys and a gaucho is a South American cowboy so it sort of made me laugh to think about that because that show was hilarious still is um so come on in i'm going to talk you through what we need and then i'll talk you through all the instruments and baking dishes and baking um things that we're going to need so come on in okay so as i mentioned yes it is easter it is uh easter monday um i had to pre-order all my meat and funny story but not so funny I did ask my butcher for 225 grams of beef strips, which I was obviously going to just stir fry up to go in this gaucho pie. Um, went to check yesterday afternoon. I got the meat Saturday. No big deal. It's fine. Thought the cubes are in there for later in the week. I can use those. And then I thought, no, I don't want cubes in this recipe. So I had to make a trek to Katoomba this morning, uh, which from my place isn't too far, but obviously coming back in holiday traffic, it wasn't too bad. Um, if I had have left later, like I wanted to, it would have been worse. So therefore I ended up having to buy 400 grams of steak. So I had a nice steak sandwich for lunch. So it wasn't all bad after all. And there'll probably be extra steak in it, which is fine. So um, now that you know that story, that was probably TMI. Uh, this is one eggplant. It's bigger than 350 grams, but that's what we're going to use. I'll explain what we're going to be doing with that after. 225 grams of macaroni. I have not weighed it out yet, but that's there. Obviously, we're going to need a pot of boiling water to cook that. Two tablespoons of oil, we'll go with olive oil. Two onions, which we're going to chop. One red capsicum, all green if you prefer green, which we are going to de-seed and chop. That's a really big capsicum, but I think I'll just use all of it. I don't mind having extra of that. One green chilli, which we're going to slice. One clove of garlic, which we're going to peel and crush. Three tomatoes, which we are going to skin and chop. 100 grams of corn kernels. I remembered I had corn kernels in the cupboard, which they're 125 grams. Hey, if I'm putting extra eggplant in and extra capsicum and extra beef, I can go a bit of extra corn kernels. 225 grams of diced cooked beef. Well, as I said, I've only had one piece and there was six of those. Um, so there's more than enough of that. I've got to just dice that up. Salt and pepper. 25 grams of butter. Fancy butter now. Four tablespoons of plain flour. Two cups of beef stock. I'm just going to make that one up today. Two egg yolks, which we're going to beat. Got to um, crack them, separate them. The whites I'm going to pop in a bag and freeze for a later date. You can freeze egg whites, but as I found out, egg yolks do not like being frozen. So 
If you've got to use the egg whites and you've got them in the freezer, just get them out to defrost for a little while. If you've got to use the um, the whites and you can't use the yolks, I'm sorry, but the yolks have to go. They just they don't freeze well at all, unfortunately. Quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs. It doesn't say whether to use fresh or froze or dried, so I'm just going to use the dried ones because I very rarely use them. One teaspoon of chopped parsley. This is the joys of preparing things in advance. That is chopped flat leaf parsley. So all I need to do is measure that out. And then we need another two tablespoons of melted butter. So that's once again back to that. So um, basically everything is going to go in a large baking dish, which I used the other baking dish last night and it's still in the fridge with the rest of the pork and potato hot pot see the previous episode thank you for watching it and um, therefore I've only got a small small er tray or a really big tray so um, I'll do what I normally do if all else fails on the small tray I'll just abandon that and chuck it into the bigger tray so we are going to slice the eggplant up we need to put salt on it and leave it for 30 minutes and then we're going to rinse it and dry it. So that's going to be our first step. Once we've done that and that's in to soak with the timer on, then we can get on to the rest of it. So I'm just going to clear some space and get ready to do that and I'll be back. Now it doesn't say which way to slice it, but my theory is this is going to look something like a lasagna. So if you want if you're doing lasagna you wouldn't normally have slices this way you'd have them this way so therefore my brain is telling me to go this way and as I said uh, this is a bigger one I always ask for smaller ones um, I don't mind because it will probably help the dish a little bit more so just slice it up. I'll just go the other way now. Don't slice it too thick, but don't slice it too thin as well. And don't slice fingers, okay? I was hesitating whether to put the mandolin slicer away because I had it washed I washed it up obviously. And um, I thought, oh, I wonder if I can use that. But I don't think it would really mandolin slice this very well. All right, I'm going to leave that at that. So as I said, I've got a very large baking dish, which may end up being our rescue if necessary we're going to just put salt over it now, now there is a reason for using salt um, I'm going to google it when I have a little break and I'm going to tell you why we're salting it so just crack the salt all over the top we don't need to soak it in water just salt and I'm going to put the timer on for 30 minutes and I'll be right back Thanks Google, we salt the eggplant to draw out the bitterness. There you go, Google's awesome. All right, so while that timer's ticking away for half an hour, we are going to get everything else ready. So grab a saucepan that we can put some boiling water in. Yeah, okay. Just gonna put some uh, salt, some water on with some salt to boil. I don't know how much I'm gonna need. So I've got to weigh out the macaroni as well. I'm not organised. I told you that. But anyway, pop that one on with some salt. Ah, who wants to be organised anyway? All right. So. To do your to weigh your macaroni, pop a bowl on there, press T A R E. 
We want 225 grams. Now, it says noodles or macaroni. Um, personally, I don't really think noodles would go good in it, and macaroni is awesome. So, 225 grams it is. If this overflows, I won't be happy, okay? Oh, a little bit more. As I say, I always 226 grams is fine. Uh, I always try and use recipes where I'm using things up, so that's a good one for me. I've still got some macaroni, but at least that uses up one thing. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. So once that water starts to boil, pop your macaroni in. So this is um, the two steps that need to be done first. Um, also, we can preheat the oven to 180 degrees and then that way um, that can start and preheat. So I'm going to do that. Pop your kettle on to boil as well because we've got to de-skin some tomatoes. We're really getting into it now, so let's roll. Okay, so in one of my previous episodes, I would have shown you how to, um, what do we call it, skin a tomato oh we're not de-seeding them we're only skinning them cool that's only half a nightmare okay it's not really a nightmare all right so what you need to do i was given four tomatoes but i'm only going to use three put a cross in the base not the top the base so make you're basically just cutting through the tomato So if you guys are following me, you're actually doing three things at once here. Be very impressed with yourself. All right, I'm going to get the kettle. So what we do, we're just going to pop the hot water over the top. And then what we need is we need cold water because you give them a, an ice bath. That should do. They don't, they don't need a very high ice bath. It's sort of a bit of a sad day as well. This is the last recipe from this book and this range of books actually. Um, so you won't be seeing me do too many um, out there sort of recipes. I'll be doing easy ones, which I guess everyone likes. I mean, I don't have a lot of time for doing these way out recipes, but I like to do them because it keeps testing me testing my abilities and I learn new skills as well and um, obviously without any helpers around anymore um, I'm still learning on my own and I will keep learning different cooking methods and so on and so on every day I cook every time I cook I'm always learning something new so literally just peels back And we're chopping these after, so we basically just need to get a chopping board ready for them. Or another bowl. Now, don't get rid of the hot water yet. Sometimes they might get a little bit stubborn. I'm just going to have to put the peel in the sink. I need to go and feed the compost bin. Alright. So there you have it. That... It's as easy as that. I nearly dropped it. They're slippery when they're like that. Just don't stick your hands in the hot water. See how easy that peels off? And that didn't even take long. So I won't bore you by showing you how I do all three. So I'll be back. Okay, so once they're done, you literally just chop them up. Go one, two, three, four, chop, chop, chop. And then rather than dirty another bowl, just chuck them in one of the two bowls. 
you can discard the water. Some recipes tell you to de-seed them as well, which that sort of gets a bit annoying, but if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. All right, the water's boiling, so I'm gonna pop the macaroni in now, and we've still got 20 minutes on the eggplant. Okay, so next up, we're gonna de-seed and chop the capsicum. I think I can get rid of the scales now because I'm not going to worry about weighing anything else. If it's too big or too much, it is what it is. So try and um, declutter everything as you can um, as you go, and then that way it's a bit easier. And don't forget to stir your macaroni if you walk past it or hear it bubbling away. All right, so whopping great capsicum so you could chop it that way if it decides it wants to and then this way you can actually get that bit out first and then hopefully you can peel all the seeds out together give it a quick wash cold water give it a wash And then get ready to chop. All right, here we go. Chop it up as big or as little as you want it. Doesn't say to dice it, but it's better diced. So we're going to have a nice array of colors or well, not really there's a lot of red going on so if you can do a green capsicum then you'll get a nice array of colors although we've got the yellow with the corn it doesn't matter it's all going in at the end of the day it's all going in and you don't see the black of the eggplant because you'll really only concentrate on the white part or the inside. Let's try and keep that part out. Last big piece up. Okay, in it goes. Cool. All right, bye bye chopping board and knife. Okay, so we've also still got to chop up the two onions. We'll need to chop the green chili. Oh, we're going to slice that one. There it is. I thought I lost that. Uh, you should wear gloves when you're slicing a chilli. But I don't know about the green one. Maybe I can find out the hard way. All right. I'm just going to get a couple of bowls and some slicing mats and I'll be right back. Okay. So I had to laugh because I put the scales away and then I realised that I've still got away butter. So they're back. Um, I've made up half a litre of beef stock, so that was half a litre of water, two teaspoons of stock powder. I'm going to chop up the onions. Just get rid of all this. I've just 
just stirred the macaroni again. It is nearly ready. All right, I'm going to peel these and I'll be back. Okay, so I've just lifted the macaroni off the stove top and um, there's 10 minutes to go on the eggplant. So we'll get a wriggle on. We're just going to chop up the onions and I'll pop them in this jug. So just cut them in half. Chop, chop, chop. You can cut them as small or as big as you want. Just don't cut your fingers. Oh, that was a cryy onion. Oh man, this one's a cryy onion too. He got me the cryy onions. Wow, two from two. The one yesterday wasn't a cryy onion. Oh, I'm gonna ask for cryy, cryy less onions next time. All right, there we go. Oh, that was a nightmare. All right, grab a another chopping board and a little bowl. We're gonna do the green chili. We're just slicing this one. Um, I think as long as I don't touch seeds, I should be fine. I don't know. I'll let you know. I won't touch my eyes. That's definitely a no. God, they got seeds all the way down. What is going on? All right, that's where I guess this knife will come in handy. I know the red one, you shouldn't touch the seeds. Probably the green one as well. I don't know. I'm touching seeds now. I'm fine. I hope. Just don't rub my eyes, I guess. Oh, the seeds go all the way downtown. Seriously. What the hell? Is that normal? I very rarely cook with chili. So... Don't know if the seeds are supposed to go all the way down. Obviously, I'm not going to question them because if they have, if they are going down the bottom, then they are going down the bottom. All right, here we go. That's the way. All right. Just sort of corkscrew it out. Okay, if I give it a bit of a wash, we might just get the rest of the seeds out. I feel like there's hardly anything to it once you do that. Oh. All right. <coughs> Cut it in half, I think. Cut it in half again. All right. My cutting skills are not very good today. Maybe it's because it's sort of like a day off. Maybe my knife just sucks. Oh, I'm finding seeds. I don't want seeds in it. Thank you. All right. Just keep slicing and dicing. Oh man, the seeds are just like an amazing horror story. Hopefully not. They're not really like a horror story.
Okay, so there's two more cooks left on this fortnight. Just so you know. 14 days, four cooks. And they're not over the two weeks either. They're sort of spread out. They're basically the days that I finish early and my day off. And I'll rephrase that to my days I finish early where I don't feel like I've got a migraine coming on or I'm just so tired that I can't keep my eyes open because that happens. All right, that is that. Uh, one clove of garlic, we're going to peel it and we're going to crush it. There we are. We need another knife. Running out of knives that are clean, which is silly because I've got like a whole drawer full and two chopping blocks as well, just so you know. So I'm not really going to run out of knives. Just the hanging up knives. I was very reluctant to get one of those magnetic knife strips, which you may have seen sometimes when I'm cooking in my very cramped kitchen. When you've got a very cramped kitchen, you just have to make use of every space you can uh, to hang things and whatever. And I actually came across something really cool in one of the holiday homes that I went to, which is a new holiday home anyway. Uh, they have the saucepans hanging from the ceiling. Not actually from the ceiling, but they're on like a, a ladder that's hanging down. So the saucepans are hanging there. So I thought that looks pretty cool, but in my kitchen it would just look really weird. So I looked at it and admired it. Um, I've also got to cut up this steak. We're going to... Cut this into strips, I think. No, we're going to dice it. I knew that. So I pretty much cooked it right up. And this is just called um, sandwich steak. I wasn't going to pay like 23 bucks to buy way too much steak. As I said, it was great because I could have the steak in my sandwich but still it was money that I wasn't planning on spending so my egg and bacon with cheese sandwich ended up becoming a steak egg bacon and cheese sandwich and if I had a known that I had a tomato I could have at least put tomato on it but anyway it is what it is and I maybe could have used a little bit of that onion too but uh, all good. All right, that buzzer is for the eggplant. So that's pretty cool. So this is why you get one thing going first and then you just get on to everything else. So we're dicing this up. So the only things I've got to do now... Uh, weigh out some butter, measure out some flour, open a can of corn, and I think we're about good to good to roll. All right, so let's pop that back on the plate because that's just easier to do it that way. All right, clean hands. Let's see what we're going to do now. Obviously, we know what we're going to do, but we're going to get it done. All right, clean hands, dry hands. Okay, so in half an hour, our eggplant looks like that. So you can sort of see it's sweating. So all we need to do is give it a really good rinse. So I think I'll just put water in this tray. Cold water, not hot water. Oops, I knew that. All right, so I'm just gonna soak that in a bit of cold water. 
while we work out our next battle plan. All right. Drain your macaroni as well. Alright, so this is when you realise that your kitchen is really, really small. When you don't have room to drain pasta. Okay, that will do. Alright, so we're just rinsing off our eggplant. Okay, let's see what we're doing. Okay, we are going to fry the eggplant in the oil until golden and set aside. Fry the onion, red or green pepper, chilli, garlic and tomatoes for four minutes. Mix in the corn kernels. Okay, so I'm going to get a frying pan ready and I'll be back. Okay, this is why we're lucky I didn't put the frying pan away after lunch. All right, two tablespoons of oil. We won't do what I did today. I ended up putting a lot of olive oil in. And if you're in Australia and you've been trying to buy olive oil like I have been, uh, it's a bit hard to get and you sort of end up spending a lot more buying brands that you don't really care for because at the end of the day to me, I just use olive oil. Other people, different story, they have their preferences, but with me, I'm just happy to have olive oil. So we're just going to rinse these off and we're just going to fry them. Now we need to dry them, but I know it sounds absolutely stupid. They're going in a frying pan. They're going to dry in a frying pan, aren't they? Sort of. Okay. I'm going to sit them on top of each other. Good, that's why I didn't put the tongs away as well. You can see it's got a bit brown, but I guess that's because it was out of water. All right, so once we're happy with that, we're going to just sit it back in the tray that I had it in. Um, I also need a couple of other things as well. Okay, so we're nearly ready to fly. This should be starting to get pretty hot. Obviously the ones down the bottom are going to sizzle a lot quicker. And it's probably easier to do them in batches as well. So as I say, at the end of the day, the one at the bottom is going to come out first and then you're going to put another one there. So they'll be fine. You'll just place stacks on with them. All right. So I'll be back in a little while. Okay, so once the eggplants all look like that, you can lift them all out. Next up, we are adding the onion. the capsicum the green chili The garlic and the tomatoes. Okay. 
that's pretty full. I've just got to get the garlic, of course. Grab the garlic. And we're going to stir fry this for four minutes. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, we're going to put the corn in, which I thought I brought over, but I didn't. And I've abandoned the idea of using the smaller pan because I've got this theory that nothing's, it's all going to just overflow. So therefore, I'm starting to get the other one ready. Okay. So I've sprayed the tray. We're just going to layer the eggplant on the bottom and we'll be back. Okay, so over the top of the eggplant goes the diced beef. So just sprinkle it over. Season that with salt and pepper. So yeah, this is going to be too big, but the other one I reckon would have been too small. So either way. All right, next up we're going to bring those veggies over. These are going to go straight over the top. Oh, shit. This is a really heavy frying pan. It's not really good for my wrists at the moment. Okay. So just layer that over the top. Okay. Should be looking something like that. Bits of beef sticking their heads up saying hello. To know about that, I'd be a bit worried about that. All right, macaroni over the top. Okay, now we're not done yet. We're going to make a sauce. Okay, so just make sure your macaroni is all over the top. I definitely chose wisely on this one. The pan I'm talking about. Okay, so this will be all right here. We need a frying pan. No, we don't. We need a saucepan. Thank you. Our 25 grams of butter we're going to put into that saucepan. And my suggestion is to use the hot plate that we just had the other thing on. You want four tablespoons of flour in with this and grab yourself a whisk. Should have melted the butter first by the way melt your butter first but it'll it'll do quick so it's fine all right come on over let's roll Whew. okay the joys of having a small kitchen you can fly from one side to the other all right just really keep whisking it not that hard that you're gonna throw all the flour out though okay Better turn it on. I do need it back on though. I'll just put it on one. Okay, so we're making what we call a row, R O U X, which is just basically a flour and butter dough. which once ready, we are then going to be putting the beef stock in with. Mm. 
All right, I'm going to very quickly grab that beef stock. Okay. Now, when it's looking like that, my suggestion would be to put just a little bit of beef stock in and turn it up. All right, that's a bit more than a little bit of beef stock. Turn it up because we've got it all stuck in our whisk. Now we need to get a bowl to put our egg yolks in because we're going to be putting this over the top of the egg yolks. I didn't invent this idea, I'm just reading it out loud. Make sure you've got no lumps and bumps. There's a couple of lumps in there. We'll get rid of them as we go. Unfortunately, when you're doing this part, you can't walk away from it. So the fact that I said we need two egg yolks in a bowl means exactly that, but we can't do it yet because we don't want to walk away from this part. All right, I'll be back very soon. Well, I was wrong about that. We put that in. We put this over the yolks and then we pour it back into here and that will thicken it. So let's go do the yolks. Now there are a couple of ways to do yolks. Um, this is probably the best invention ever. It's a, obviously an egg separator. Over a cup, we want the yolk, we don't want the white. So the yolk is going to go into the jug that we had the stock in. So we need a teaspoon. Beautiful, in goes yolk. Now the white, remember I was talking about in the introduction, I've got a bag for them. Two of them are going to go in here. And then in the freezer. So grab that thing back, the egg separator thing. Just go and give your liquid a whisk. Other egg in, same same deal again. Yolk goes in the jug, white goes in the bag. Okay. Whoa, perfect. All right, we can do that part after. All right, come on over. We'll use this little spoon and we'll just put a little bit of the stock in here and then we'll stir them in. Okay, so best way to do this is to grab a spoon. Oh, I've got some flour in there. I don't want the flour in the bottom. Naughty, naughty. Get whisking. All right, I'm going to mix that into that. Just going to turn that up because I'm, I'm back with it. All right, we don't want any lumps on the bottom. Okay. The yolks, you are supposed to put all of it into it, but do you know what? That's just as good as. All right, so this is basically just going to thicken it up now. Basically, just. All right, so... Don't turn your back on it for too long. If you're just starting up cooking, don't turn your back on it at all. All right, so two egg whites are in a bag, which I'm going to mark later. That's done. How are we looking? We're not super thick yet, but we're not thin, so it's good. We just basically want to bring it to the boil. That should thicken it. 
Um, we also are going to need our, on the top, this is going to go over the top. Um, bake in the oven. Oh, so we're not putting the st other stuff on top until later. Okay, good to know. I was going to get all that ready, but there's no point. Read your recipe and read it again and again and again. So we basically just want to bring this to the boil and then we're ready to put that over the top of that. That goes in the oven for half an hour. And then the breadcrumbs and the butter and the parsley are going to go over the top for the final five minutes. Okay, now that you know that, it's all good. So the, the idea, I guess, is that it's technically an upside down pie because the eggplant's on the bottom. All right, I'll be back when this is thick and we're ready to roll. Okay, so when you're happy enough with how thick it is, drizzle it over the top. We're going to pop this in the oven for half an hour and then we'll be back to put the breadcrumbs on. Okay, the buzz is gone. I'm just going to go grab it and bring it over. <sighs> smelling good okay so that is it so far now, I'm just going to put the butter on for 30 seconds so over the top we're just going to sprinkle the parsley and the breadcrumbs and then the butter so just go like this As I said in the intro, it didn't specify whether we was using fresh or dried. So I've just gone with dried. At the end of the day, it's looking good. We're just going to put this over the top. Good, it's nice and melted. And then just another five minutes back in the oven and we'll be back and ready to roll. Okay, and there we have it. Gaucho pie is ready to go. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Cooking with Violet Bixen. This has been Gaucho Pie. If you like the show and you're enjoying it, hit the subscribe button. I hope to see you on another cooking adventure soon. And um, take care and happy Easter.